Hi, my name is Julia Volkman, and I'm here to tell you about my research on the movable alphabet. So I was teaching in public schools, and I was very frustrated by the standardized assessments we were required to give to preschoolers. So I had a question. In typical spelling assessments, three to four-year-olds get lower scores than five-year-olds. What would happen if we changed the way those assessments were delivered? Are those lower scores the result of typical development, or is it because the assessments that we're giving them are flawed? So I designed a research study that would test that question. First of all, I decided that I would use a working memory scaffold in both assessments. A working memory scaffold is something that helps you keep something in mind so you don't have extra work just to keep track of things. And in this study, the movable alphabet was a working memory scaffold because it showed you all the letters in the alphabet. You didn't just have to imagine and remember what they were. This study also showed children a picture of the word they were being asked to spell, so they didn't have to keep that in mind either. They could focus just on the aspect of spelling. So I'm going to jump to the discussion results of the study here, and you can see these on the full poster. First of all, the scaffolded assessment demonstrates that preschoolers can spell. And in fact, the movable alphabet spelling assessment is a more reliable, valid, and sensitive measure of preschool spelling abilities than a handwritten assessment. So the lower scores historically reported on handwritten preschool spelling assessments may not actually reflect typical development. They may reflect a lack of motor ability or working memory limitations. So if we want to understand a true picture of the preschooler's spelling ability, we need to use a scaffolded assessment to evaluate it. And I suggest that future studies do this on a large scale. Next, a really exciting finding of this study is that the movable alphabet might be useful as a standalone early literacy assessment instead of using tests of phonemic awareness and letter sound knowledge. So we could shorten the amount of time that children are spending in assessment and increase the amount of time they're available to be engaged in learning in the classroom. Next, scaffolds influenced self-efficacy. So self-efficacy is the belief that you are capable of doing the thing you're being asked to do. I did not think that self-efficacy was a question of this study. And it wasn't until I was doing the research and the children started saying really surprising things that it occurred to me that this might be involved. They'd say things like, what does the T look like? I can't do it. How would you do it? I couldn't show them. I could only suggest do the best you can. One said, I can't write and just refused to begin. One, he said, I don't know how to draw that letter. I'm going to draw this one instead. So they knew that the correct sound they needed was a specific letter, but they wrote a letter that they were able to write instead. They prioritized the written over the accurate. Future research should absolutely consider the relationship between assessments without scaffolds and self-efficacy. Another surprising finding of this study is that behavior was not closely tied to assessment results. If you'd like to learn more, you can get a full copy of the study, get a PDF right there from the Harvard Library's digital platform. And you can also visit my website, matrilearning.com, go to the Learning Center and go to the pedagogy blog about Montessori, look for research, or this is where I put all my stuff by Julia, lots of little video resources and little research presentations that you may find useful. Thank you, and I wish you great luck in all of your work.